Not everybody agrees what is attractive about women. What do you think is attractive about women? I don't know if you're a man or a woman, but it might be different depending on what your gender is. Now, women have been getting it wrong for a really long time, and it's important for us to correct these myths about female attractiveness. Now, I'm Dr. Taylor Burrows. I am a marriage, couples, dating, relationship coach, and I have a PhD in marriage and family counseling. And this is a topic that often comes up because women have been influenced by feminism. They have been brought up to think that things that aren't actually attractive to men are what they're supposed to do in order to attract a partner. But maybe they're attracting the wrong type of partner, but ultimately what they're doing is they're actually projecting what they think the, is attractive about the other sex, about men. So some of these things that are quite common uh, misconceptions about attractiveness is one, I mean, if you look at me right now, I am wearing something quite feminine. It's a nice floral dress. You can't see the rest of it, but I promise you it is girly and flowy and I love it. It's super comfortable. <laughs> and I've got some makeup on, but it's not overdone. It's not caked on. I don't have like big false fake lashes, drawn on eyebrows. I actually didn't do anything to my eyebrows. I have a nice natural lip, um, nothing too drastic, although red lipstick is fine when you're dressed up and going out from time to time. And I have just a nice clear skin naturally. So I've been taking care of my skin inside and out with supplements and a skincare line that I love. Usually I put the link down below, but if I haven't included it, it's because I want you to ask me for the, the things that I recommend to use, but it is Noble Body and the Youth Serum from Gorilla Mind. So there's a lot of things that you can do to bring that vibrancy and that health and vitality out to your appearance so that people are actually attracted to it because it will also signify your energy. So it's not just your health, but your energy and your personality as well, right? So that beauty and that attractiveness is not about being overly done and exaggerated. And I've talked about the difference between sexy and slutty before. That was a pretty popular topic, but being mindful that yes, you want to be able to take care of yourself and do the things that that are very feminine like getting your nails done or doing them yourself uh, doing facials doing your hair getting it nice and, and cut so that it looks healthy but also eating well sleeping getting your exercise and some sunshine as you can tell i've got a little bit of a tan right now so making an effort to be in the sun as well but you also want to shade and and make sure that you're not overdoing it so a lot of it is about that appropriate level of amplification so we want to emphasize what our natural beauty is and not try to sort of wear a costume basically so sometimes you know we might switch it up and, and dress up a little bit more but try to tone it down a little bit and you don't always have to wear that like mini skirt with a low <laughs> um, neckline that's too tight and a really bright color with lots of makeup and your hair really overdone with bangles and earrings like that's just way too much so being a little bit more subtle you don't have to look like you know you're coming off of a farm although you, know, you can look very beautiful like that too but you don't have to you can still dress up and have fun with it and be, be flirty but you don't have to go overboard so that's something that's definitely really really important for women to keep in mind but also on the flip side of it being overly comfortable is also not attractive and somehow women have really stopped trying in North America especially. So wearing sweatpants out, wearing your hair tousled and basically unbrushed out in public and flip flops and boxers or whatever it is that people are doing these days, that is not attractive at all. I don't know where that got into your head that just not caring about your appearance was attractive because it not. <laughs> so keep that in mind. That's definitely a, a, a really important piece of this um, to add to the list. So appearance wise, like it's not about overdoing it. It's about accentuating your natural beauty and looking sweet and feminine. And yeah, you know, just, just don't pull it back. <laughs> don't go overboard. Now, some of the other areas that I think we are getting it wrong on is the way that we approach interactions and dating with men right? It, we're not supposed to be aloof 
and uncaring, like we're guarded and we don't let down our guard, we don't let people in, we're sort of cold and distant. Somehow that's kind of the assumption of what is attractive, but absolutely not. Uh, men do not find that attractive. Now, I think what was sort of leading to that, that myth was that men like mystery, they like you to play hard to get, uh, they like a challenge but that's not the challenge that they like. <laughs> so you see these women who are being aloof, but being maybe very sexual. So those, that's the exact opposite of what is attractive and what men want and what we really want as women, because I think we just got it wrong to begin with or rebelled. And what we need to do is recognize that being selective is being the challenge, um, picking a, a someone to open up to, someone to let down our guard, someone to be intimate with emotionally even, and let ourselves be known to them emotionally and physically and sexually, right? So that is something that should be held for someone special. Now, it might not be one or two people, it could be a dozen people, but depending on your circumstances, you have to recognize that these people should be going through a vetting process that I talk about often, and that you're selecting this person for a reason, based on your set of values and you know the fact that you align and it's a positive, uh, healthy, safe relationship. So, you know, I'm, oh gosh, I'm 40 next month, but um, at 40 years old, you don't, you know, you've been in some relationships if you're the same age as I am. So you don't have to worry so much about exactly acting like a 22 year old who's straight out of living with her parents, but you have some life experience, but make sure that you're being selective. Make sure that your boyfriends are people that are of good character, they have you know good reputations, they treat you well. Don't just go out there and do the whole single dating uh, casually thing, because that's definitely not attractive to someone who's looking for a good woman who's gonna be a life partner and mother to their children, right? So that's another one. The aloofness is a, is a myth that isn't actually attractive to men. So some of the other things that we get wrong is kind of, you know, the strong independent stereotype of, of women these days, that isn't attractive to, to men. That's attractive to women about men, but not in the reverse. So we like men who are strong and a little bit stoic and independent. But in regards to women, it's important for us, again, to be, we want to be responsible and healthy, right? We want to be aware of ourselves, what we think, how we feel, and what we do, and be able to make those congruent and stable. So we need to be stable, but that doesn't necessarily mean strong like man, you know? <laughs> like stoicism is not a, a sexy thing for a woman. It's really important for us to be in touch with our emotions. We are the yin to their yang, right? Like it doesn't mean we have to be overflowing with chaotic emotions, but we wanna be able to access those emotions and to be able to communicate them appropriately. It's actually quite helpful uh, when you're vetting someone to connect to them in that way. If you're always holding back, you're gonna be bypassed and you're gonna be sabotaging situations that could end up being extremely positive and productive with a lot of potential for the real deal. So if you want an ideal partner, you definitely have to be considering reevaluating some of these myths. Now I'm not done yet. So we've talked about appearance, we've talked about aloofness, we've talked about the strong and independent type. Now the other one is quite controversial, but trust me, you know, I have been in this sort of position where I thought the, indi ind sorry, not independent, the intelligent woman was the attractive thing. Now you can't become unintelligent if you're intelligent. I guess if you really tried, you could, but you don't have to not be intelligent, but this is not something that you lead with. This is not something that men are really looking for. It's an added bonus for a woman to be smart and for a woman to be engaging and charming, to be able to have a really interesting conversation. But the most attractive thing to men is for her to be interesting and curious. So to be receptive as well, you don't wanna be in a power struggle with a woman. A man does not want to be in a power struggle with a woman. He doesn't want to be challenged in that way. That's not the type of challenge he's looking for, again. The challenge is, for her to be selective. And that's the only challenge she's looking for. Now, 
In regards to once you have like a nice sort of interaction style with someone, they do like a woman to create some kind of contrast to what he's bringing to the relationship. So there is a little bit of tension. Now that you can call that challenge, but really that's just something that's interesting. It's some, some, some substance, some personality that you're bringing to the relationship. So they do want you to be energetic. They want you to have a personality so that you have some, some specific identity and substance that makes you unique and special to them. But ultimately, you have to really put this, this idea of you know, trying to one-up your partner with your smarts, trying to be right, trying to have your way. Uh, none, of that, none of that is good, let alone attractive to a man, like not something that he's actually seeking out. Now, a little aside, it's actually quite helpful when the man is a little bit more intelligent than the woman. Now you can be on par, but as long as you, you again don't try to, uh, what's the word? Like you're not trying to sort of vie for positioning above him, right? He should be seen as the one kind of ultimately playing like a dominant role, right? And so you don't have to be submissive in a passive way, but you want to be cooperative. That's what's really attractive is for a woman to be flexible, to be kind, to be humble, and to have that uh, cooperative attitude versus the one that's really pushy and opinionated and, and, and you know trying to sort of get her way all the time. So that's another one that's also very important too is um, reframing the intelligent woman to be what's really a smart woman is a woman who recognizes that that is attractive to a man for her to be a lot more receptive to him and for her to see him as you know someone that she admires and thinks is brilliant and all of those um, very sort of attractive qualities to her so being receptive to that is the opposite of what we've kind of been playing out all this time so let's take a, a new look at that one and the last one it's you know these all kind of go together a little bit, but we need to sort of recognize that overall we don't want to we don't want to be failing at our relationships because we're misunderstanding what men are actually looking for. So one of the other things, the last one on the list that I have is this sort of biting sense of humor. Like we don't have to be the most loud and sassy or in you know like the the life of the party that's not actually attractive to a man especially sarcasm sarcasm is a big turnoff so you don't want to be sour in that way what you want to do is is be fun be energetic be creative be willing to do something out of the norm rather than you know sort of resistant to things so having that openness and being fun having that energy is very attractive to men so to wrap up <laughs> i think there was about five things but I, I know i touched on a few extras so it's the appearance not going overboard not being aloof the strong and independent stereotype the intelligence and the last one is not sort of being focused on being the life of the party and loud but being more fun and energetic and energizing instead so i hope that was helpful please like this video subscribe to the channel so you can get all of them the notifications right to your email and also i have a live video on mondays at 6 p.m eastern time and if you'd like to talk to me one-on-one -on -one for any of your life or relationship coaching you can reach out using the link below and ask for your 15-minute free discovery call Thanks for watching. Ciao.